Hello chemists, this is Ms. Placino, and in this video we're going to talk about lab number seven, analysis of antacids. Uh, this video is going to cover pre-lab, um, so if you haven't gone through and watched the procedural video yet, maybe stop this one and watch that first. Okay, so this is the second week that we're going to be doing titrations. Hopefully you feel a little bit more comfortable after lab number six. Um, I'm going to assume that you can kind of get through um, uh, question one on your own and just be reading the lab. But uh, let's pick up with question number two. Predict the products and balance the following neutralization equations. Include phases. All right, so let's talk about these reactions a little bit. Over the course of the lab, you're going to be running two sets of titrations. The first one is going to be to standardize sodium hydroxide, and the second is going to be to determine the effectiveness of the N-acid tablets. If you've read through the lab already, you probably came across the molecule or a chemical called KHP. Um, a lot of new chemists think that that is a potassium, a hydrogen, and a phosphorus atom bonded together, KHP. That is not what it is. That is potassium phthalate, which is this compound right here. This is KHP. Uh, KHP is a weak acid, and we can use it to standardize sodium hydroxide. We have to standardize sodium hydroxide because just like in the last lab where we could not trust the mass of sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate, we can't trust the mass of sodium hydroxide. If you leave the sodium hydroxide sitting out on the bench top, it's going to start to suck in water from the atmosphere and almost look like it's melting. Um, it's called being hydrogroscopic, the ability to absorb water. So when I take the mass of sodium hydroxide, I don't know how much of it is actually NaOH and how much of that mass is water molecules that have been sucked in from the atmosphere. So again, I can't use the mass of NaOH and the volume of the solution I made to calculate molarity. I have to do it using titrations. So, this is an acid-base neutralization. Hopefully you remember from sophomore year um, that you always produce water. The um, OH of the base and the H plus from the acid will join to make liquid water. That's technically what's neutralizing each other. And then our um, cation from the base and anion from the acid will join to form the salts. We'd have Na, in this case, CH, H, seven K O four. That's going to be aqueous. It will dissolve in water. If you go to balance it, everything balances up nicely with coefficients of one, one to one to one to one ratio. All right. Hopefully, letter B is a little bit more familiar to you. This is the titration we're going to be using while we are analyzing the effectiveness of the N acids. We'll be taking sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and reacting it with a solution of hydrochloric acid, HCl. This one should be much easier to predict the products. Again, create water, because that's just always going to happen with an Arrhenius acid and base neutralizing each other. And our salt this time will be sodium chloride. You know from your past life experience that sodium chloride dissolves in water, so that will stay aqueous. Again, we end up with coefficients of one across the board. And you can write them in or not. If there's no coefficient, it's of course assumed that it is a coefficient of one. During these two different titrations, we're going to be using two different indicators. Uh, when you titrate sodium hydroxide with KHP, we're going to use phenolphthalein. This is one I never spell correctly, and I'm sure today will be no exception. Phenol, P-H-T-H-A-L-I-N-E. Pretty close, uh, close enough. Phenolphthalein. Um, this is an indicator that we worked with in lab before, uh, during your sophomore year. Um, when you take your, I guess when you set up for this titration, KHP is going to go in the Erlenmeyer. And sodium hydroxide is in the burette. You're going to add the indicator, the phenolphthalein, to the KHP solution, and it will remain clear or colorless. I always like to think about it. As you go and you start to titrate, as you add the sodium hydroxide, um, it should start to turn pink. And once that pink color persists for 30 seconds, and hopefully it is like a nice subtle pink and not a bright in your face 1980s prom dress pink, um, that means you've reached the end point of your titration. We use that particular indicator because we have a strong base. We're neutralizing it 
with a weak acid. Um, even when these have completely neutralized each other due to the strength of conjugate acids and bases that are going to be floating around in solution, the pH will be over 7. Uh, so we use in a, a basic indicator to determine the endpoints. Sodium hydroxide and HCl. Again, the sodium hydroxide is going to be in the burette. The HCl will be in the Erlenmeyer. We're still working with a strong base. And hopefully you remember that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Since both the acid and the base are strong, um, at their endpoint, the uh, pH of the solution should be 7. So we can't use phenolphthalein as an indicator. We need a neutral indicator. We're going to be using bromthymol blue. A little easier for me to spell. Uh, most of you have not worked with bromthymol blue before. Uh, we just did that one titration in 10th grade, and it was weak base, uh, sorry, weak acid versus strong base, so phenolphthalein was appropriate. When I put my bromthymol blue in HCl, my acidic solution, it's going to be yellow. Any educated guesses on what color bromthymol blue will be at its end point? Yeah, it is going to be blue. There we go. And once it turns blue and it persists for about 30 seconds or so, you've reached the endpoint of the titration, you are done. Um, but make sure that you are using the correct indicator with the combination of um, titrant and analyte. You don't want to flip-flop them. You're going to get weird endpoints. Right, question number four. Um, I'm gonna let you guys figure this one out on your own. I will give you a hint that there is one piece of numerical information in this problem that you do not need, and you should not use it for this calculation. See if you can figure it out based on what we talked about with standardization titrations. Okay, question five. The lab calls for a back titration. The N acid sample, which is basic, is reacted with an excess of hydrochloric acid. The excess hydrochloric acid is then neutralized with a standardized sodium hydroxide solution. The amount of hydrochloric acid neutralized by the antacid can then be calculated. Uh, so basically, if you were thinking about this, you might have said, well, I know that an antacid has to be basic. Why am I titrating it with more base? Wouldn't I need to titrate it with an acid to get it to neutralize? Um, and kudos to you for picking up on that. Yeah, this at first glance might not make sense. Um, the active ingredient in an acid tablet, at least the ones we're going to be using, um, is calcium hydroxide. Sorry, calcium carbonate, excuse me. Calcium carbonate is going to be a basic substance. Um, if we kind of backtrack to the acid and base that could have combined to form this, we'd have calcium hydroxide, a strong base, and carbonic acid, H2CO3, a weak acid. So if I'm just to dissolve calcium carbonate in water and take the pH of that solution, it's going to be basic. Um, we want to use a, like a basic salt, something like a calcium carbonate, um, instead of something like a sodium hydroxide, a strong base, um, in an acid tablet because you don't want to like change the pH of your stomach dramatically. It would be incredibly dangerous to consume a strong base like a sodium hydroxide. Uh, it could potentially kill you. So we want something that if you kind of overdo it a little is not going to be the end of the world. So this is basic. It's a basic salt. We don't want to titrate calcium carbonate directly because it contains buffers. Carbonate ion um, can become hydrogen carbonate. Um, and it's just going to kind of make our entire titration more difficult to follow. Um, buffers, as you might remember from like a bio class or from 10th grade chemistry, are going to resist changes in pH. And to run a titration, I need changes in pH. So we kind of have two um, concepts that are at odds with one another. Before you use your acid, you're going to crush up the tablet. Why do you think we do that? If you're thinking, well, that's going to increase the surface area and speed up the reaction rate, you are correct. So increase surface area, increase reaction rates. 
Um, when you combine the two, the hydrochloric acid um, with the crushed up calcium carbonate, it's going to be kind of akin to adding like baking soda and vinegar. Um, you're going to see bubbles immediately produced as carbon dioxide is released. Um, you want to let that reaction go until the bubbling stops. So you might want to swirl it a little bit, kind of get everything to react. Even when it is finished bubbling, there's a good chance that the antacid water, antacid acid mixture is going to be cloudy. In addition to calcium carbonate, um, the active ingredient in an antacid tablet, there are inactive ingredients, sometimes referred to as binders, uh, that are basically there um, just to make the tablet bigger. Um, if it was you know, only the active ingredient, those tablets are going to be small, maybe difficult to work with, maybe fragile. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of inactive um, compounds and molecules that are added uh, that shouldn't react, shouldn't cause any issues by any stretch, uh, but will just make the tablet bigger. Really struggled with that page down. There we go. Sorry. So inactive ingredients. All right, I'm having some trouble with a pen, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Um, and again, it's okay that it's cloudy. You just want to make sure that it stopped bubbling. No more bubbles means that all of the calcium carbonate, all the active ingredient has reacted, and you just have the binders, the inactive ingredients kind of still floating around. Write the reaction between the antacid and the HCl. So we've got uh, CaCO3 plus HCl. I'll help you with this one. Um, it's going to be a double replacement reaction followed by a rapid decomposition reaction. Uh, so I'm going to make calcium chloride, CaCl2. That's aqueous. And then I'm going to make H2CO3, carbonic acid. Um, carbonic acid is not really all that stable, um, and it can rapidly decompose into two substances that are far more thermodynamically stable. Uh, you'll make water. And the bubbles that get produced are going to be carbon dioxide. And that should do the job. And what are we going to observe as this reaction occurs? I've said it a couple times now. You should see bubbles. And that's just the carbon dioxide escaping. And that's going to be our indicator um, that no more gas is being produced. The reaction is finished. Now I'm ready to titrate. Uh, so basically, I'm going to take my crushed up um, antacid tablet. I'm going to put a bunch of acid on top of it. I'm going to effectively drown my antacid tablet and destroy the buffer system. Since the calcium carbonate is basic, it's going to neutralize some of the hydrochloric acid, but it cannot neutralize all of it. The excess acid, the acid that was not neutralized by the calcium carbonate, is going to be titrated against the sodium hydroxide. We're going to figure out, okay, how many moles of uh, hydrochloric acid did I add? How many moles of sodium hydroxide were used to neutralize that acid? And then by subtracting those values, I can figure out how much hydrochloric acid was neutralized by the antacid tablet itself. And question number six has you walk through those calculations. Um, uh, a, B, and C kind of set you up for the effectiveness calculations, and then D and E are weight and cost effectiveness, respectively. I'm going to let you play around with those. Uh, okay, so um, make sure for the pre-lab that you finish up question number four. Uh, remember, there's a piece of uh, numerical information in that problem that you do not and should not need to um, calculate, and try your best on question six. Uh, all right, thank you for tuning in, and I hope you found this helpful.